All right, so I'm going to start this off. Let me make sure it's recording. All right, cool. Um, with just naming it mouse click so that we have an easier time finding it later. And now we're going to start off with creating a function. So we can, I mean, creating a variable. So I could say, I can call it var or let, and it will actually work in either case right now. Uh, so I'll just call it value one. And I will assign it a value of zero to begin with, All right? So this is creating a global variable. So it's saying what the variable is named, what value is assigned to that variable, and um, and this is now something that I can use or refer to throughout my program. So I'm going to create a couple things in my code here um, that will allow me to use that variable. So I'll say an ellipse. I'm making a shape that is going to be the one that will change color. Um, so I'll put this ellipse in the middle, 200 by 200. We'll put it in the center of that 400, 400 canvas. And um, I guess I'll make it 200 by 200 wide as well. So now I am going to say fill and I'm using that, that variable name that I created of value one. All right, so now um, I can see I have a black circle because it is calling upon the zero that is in my variable value up here. So now I'm going to make a separate function. So a separate function means it's going to be outside um, of the function draw, outside of the function setup, right? And it's also going to be that same, uh, the same process of, of titling it function. And then this one's going to be called mouse clicked. Or mouse click. All right, so the, um, the mouse clicked function, right? So this is already pre-programmed to, to do something when, um, when the, the action of the mouse click happens. So, um, so I'm gonna here create a Boolean statement now that is going to respond to what, you know, to change the, the value based on uh, the value one variable based on whether I'm clicking my mouse or not. So let's get it started. If, so that's the beginning of a conditional statement, right? The if statement. And then I have to say what the condition is. So if um, value one oops, equals zero. So if it's black, then I want it to change to white, right? So value one uh, equals white, right? So what this would do, if it's already black, then have it overwrite the value of the variable to change it into white, right? That's what it would be doing by making it the 255. And then now I'm doing the else statement else. And I can copy and paste this, make it black, right? So. So if the value one is black, then make it white, right? Else, pretty much the only, in this particular program, the only other else would be if it's already 255, then we're having it change back into, um, into the uh, black. So let's try it now. So now you can see that it can respond to my mouse click and it stays that way. So it's going between them. So this is my value one. Um, currently, I have it programmed in as just one number here. And you might remember that if we have one number, and this is either a zero or a 255 in this case, it's going to be impacting the red, green, and the blue at the same time. I could change that by putting in some maybe zeros or other numbers here. Right, so this would make it so it would be either red or black because the 255 now is only impacting the red parameter. 
if you wanted to have it be different colors, like let's say I wanted to have it be a specific color, I could explore that as well. So let's say I look at my color picker and I really like this magenta here, which is 150, 26, 128. I could make three variables up here. So I could say var, I'm actually just gonna copy and paste this. So I could have var one, var two, var three. So now value one, value two, value three that is. And what did I say? 150, 26, 28, 128. 150, 26, 128. So now I have three different values here. I could put into my code value one, value two, value three. And then here I could say, all right, so I would have to think about this for a moment because now it's different. So my value, my starting value is 150 for value one. So I could say if value one equals 150. So if it's magenta, then maybe have them all turn black. For example, I could have all the value one, value two, value, value three turn black. So value one, value two, value three are now gonna be black only when it's magenta, right? Because magenta has that value one is 150 in magenta. Otherwise, I want it to go back to the magenta. So I would have it instead of being all zeros, I could have it be, um, what was it? 150, 26, 128. 150, 26, and 128. So if this was done properly, we'll see in a second. Um, then we have the magenta. And when I click it, it turns black. And then when I click it again, it turns back to magenta. So you can program it to do the different colors that you want, right? It doesn't have to be just boring white or black. You can say what you want to have it turn back to. So if I didn't want it to turn black, I could change this to be the values of another specific color that I picked. 